1994, we moved the 19 animals we had at that time to the countryside with the aim of living and working in peace and close to nature. Hello and welcome. We are Jutta and Marco. And we are living for 16 years here in Neuendorf, Sachsenland, in Schleswig-Holstein, the most northern federal state in Germany. We had been townsfolk before, but active friends of nature and intact natural surroundings with a wide variety of biodiversity of grass and birds, water birds and songbirds, birds of prey, owls and bats was an important criterion for us in buying an old farm which was in need of extensive renovation work. Ten months after our move, in the middle of our expensive and time-consuming renovation work and garden planning aimed at making our grounds as nature-friendly as possible, three wind turbines were erected between 320 and 420 meters from our house. The consequences for us were the following. Since 1995, we have to sleep with closed windows, even when it is extremely hot. Relaxation and peace in our garden on our land and with our animals is impossible when the wind blows. Whether from southeast, east or northwest, we can scarcely sleep, even with closed windows. Conversations inside the house in certain rooms has disturbed and since 1997-98 we have registered the first symptoms of illness such as tinnitus, a deep vibrating and high piping tones, raised blood pressure, ear pressure and serious sleep problems. This is getting worse all the time. In 2001 I noticed for the first time several small reddish white ulcers in the mouth and asked several doctors about the diagnosis and its cause. No one could explain these ulcers. In 2007 I saw photos of these ulcers in the mouth and in the bronchi of patients in Portugal who live close to wind power plants. In the investigations Castelo Branco by Alves Pereira one could read that these are typical symptoms of vibroacoustic disease, VA. Shadow flicker. Between November and February, the turbines throw a shadow in the mornings, which give us headaches, induces irritability, and disturbs our concentration. We have our offices at home. The effect on our now 80 animals in our private welfare is severe. Our sheep have suffered many miscarriages and produced deformed lambs. The sheep and cows avoid their shelter and stable, both have a tin roof. Even if it rains, snows or the sun is burning down on them. Threshold in dogs, cats and pot-bellied pigs decreases. The animals are restless. At times, with lots of wind, they are looking to get uh, away from the wind side and rest always on the downwind side. And also inside the house, they look for the area farthest from the wind turbines. Many of our Canada and Nun geese breed as far away from the turbines as possible, although we had created several islands for this purpose in the middle of our lake. They return to us for feeding but prefer to sleep elsewhere. The ducks, on the other hand, do not seem to be affected by wind turbines. But our turkeys and chickens change their sleeping quarters according to the wind direction. The impact on the avifauna, white birds and bats. In February 1995, after the wind turbines started operating, the majority of birds and bats disappeared. Birds, which are sensitive breeders, did not return after migration and the bats did not return from their winter quarters in the neighborhood. Instead, they disappeared permanently. In order to work against this loss of wildlife, we bought several hectares of land further away from the turbines in the summer of 1995 and renaturalized them. It took five years until the bird and bat population revived at a low level. Since 2001, 
the number of wind turbines in the neighborhood has risen sharply. We can now see 113 turbines from our property at distances of between 320 meters and 15 and a half kilometers, the higher ones up to 189 meters, blink day and night. This is environmental plague during the day and we live in the middle of a blinking industry park in the night. Parallel with the increase in the wind turbines and the level of exposure through infrasonic noise, shadow flicker and blinking, our medical symptoms have worsened. We both suffer from noise, particularly from vibrations which pass through our bodies day and night, from sleep deprivation with frequent awakening and rising, what means three to four hours of disrupted sleep per night to insomnia. We also suffer from memory problems and tinnitus. On the subject of noise is a recent example from the last night of 22nd to 23rd October 2010. Although the wind turbines closest to our house they currently stand still, so only five wind turbines make noise right next to us. We have measured at 2 a.m. 50 dBA in a distance of 50 cm in front of our open windows. It slept so loudly in the house that he could not fall asleep. I hear three sounds. The worst is a beating noise in my left ear. And we are suffering from raising blood pressure, especially at medium wind speeds and wind from southeast, east and northwest. I hear four different tones, the worst of all being a deep and constant buzzing or droning. Until now, none of the many consulted doctors have been able to cure this. I am also suffering from tachycardia, palpitations, concentration problems and irritability. I also suffer from vertigo and nausea when wind blows, from a feeling of pressure and tightness in the chest, which remembers to angina pectoris and periodically under cardiac arrhythmia, sometimes from ear pressure with sensations of blowing in the left ear and eye blurring. Hospital treatment in 2005 and constant checks till the middle of 2006 by means of a mobile electrocardiogram machine and by telemedicine revealed no organic heart problems. Blood investigations into cortisol levels in 2010 reveal frequently raised levels, especially when the wind conditions are particularly detrimental. Almost all these symptoms disappear in our case after three or four days. If we are in regions without wind turbines, either on holiday or away on business, only my deep buzzing in the ears has become permanent. We have made an interesting observation about the disturbance in our sleep patterns over the past few years. When we have time to watch TV, we often fall asleep out of exhaustion. We both find these naps more refreshing than our night sleep, which is disturbed between three and five times. We ask ourselves whether the resonance caused by the turbines is counteracted by a contra-resonance from the TV and thus neutralized. Investigations in this direction have already been made by experts. Special experience when I had to consult an ear, throat and nose doctor. He had adorned his waiting room not with the usual popular magazines, but with brochures advertising investment in wind turbines. A colleague commanded, thus he creates his tinnitus patients of the future. According to the Federal Ministry of Health in Germany and the country's Ministry of Health Schleswig-Holstein, Infrasonic is emitted 
only by other sound sources, but in no case by wind turbine. A suggestion by the Robert Koch Institute in 2007 to launch a fourth investigation of the sound development based on wind turbines and their impact on the health of the residents has been ignored until today. Our future prospects in Germany look grim since the wind lobby sits in all commissions and many politicians profit from the fear of the end of the world through global warming. German media play upon this fear and manipulate the spread of the holy doctrine that world and weather can be saved through wind energy, biofuels and photovoltaic. Those who do not share this opinion are mocked, threatened and attacked. Social peace in areas with wind power is gravely undermined. The success of the cooperation between all scholars and scientists in your symposium in Ontario who are not biased or dogmatized is of worldwide importance and particularly for us in Germany. We are extremely grateful for your efforts on behalf of the many affected people all over the world. Please help us and all others affected by wind turbine syndrome to prove to politicians the media and all experts on the climate catastrophe that they are ignoring the health of the rest of the population and endangering the stability of society throughout the world with their activities. Goodbye to all of you in Canada from the Windwarnmarsch in Germany. Jutta and Marco.